In aviation, scale matters. Giant aircraft not only impressed with their size, their length directly determines the ability to transport cargo, fuel, flight range, and a number of combat characteristics. The design of such aircraft has been a true engineering challenge for some, but is it only their length that makes them so special? Indeed, there are a number of outstanding features within, which we'll be telling you about right now. What more monstrous aircraft deserves the opening more than the AN-225 Maria? Its name, translated from Ukrainian, means dream and fully corresponds to the ambitions of its creators, whose labors ultimately resulted in the largest and heaviest aircraft ever built. Over 275 feet long, 59 feet high, and with a wingspan of 290 feet. The AN-225's maximum takeoff weight exceeded 1,410,958 pounds, comparable to the weight of more than 100 elephants, and its maximum payload of more than 551,156 pounds made it the world's highest lifting aircraft. Moreover, even when fully loaded, the AN-225 could make non-stop flights over impressive distances. For example, between New York and Los Angeles. Although the original purpose of building this giant was to transport the first and only Buran space plane, which had been created to catch up and overtake the U.S. space shuttle, the AN-225 made its first flight in December of 1988, appearing publicly with the Buran attached on top outside the USSR during the Paris Air Show in La Bourget in 1989. But the collapse of the USSR made its own adjustments to the Buran program, which quickly collapsed in 1993. But Maria has been active in commercial transportation since the early 2000s, becoming Antonov's workhorse for transporting items that were once considered impossible to transport by air. 130-ton generators, wind turbine blades, and even diesel locomotives. For example, in 2001, the AN-225 transported five main battle tanks, three T-72B and two T-80UD, with a total weight of 253 tons, thus setting a new record. In 2010, it transported the world's longest load, two test wind turbine blades 138 feet long, from Tianjin, China to Skrydstrup, Denmark. And in September 2012, the highest altitude art exhibition in the world took place on the plane at an altitude of 33,301 feet above sea level during the Aviasfit XX1 Aerospace Show at Kyiv Gostomo Airport. Even during the recent COVID-19 pandemic, the AN-225 took an active part in helping various countries delivering medical supplies from China to other parts of the globe. Unfortunately, this holder of 240 world records, the AN-225, passed away according to the behest of Kurt Cobain. It burned out but did not fade away. Quite literally, the plane was destroyed by Russian troops during their unsuccessful attempt to capture Gostomo Airport in February of 2022, forever occupying a special place in the Hall of Aviation fame and the hearts of aviation lovers. Now moving from commercial cargo aircraft to military aircraft, the first among the ranks of giants is the C-5 Galaxy from the well-known Lockheed Martin. In addition to being one of the largest aircraft in the world, the C-5 is also the military transport aircraft with the most capacity in the U.S. arsenal and has served our country faithfully for nearly 60 years since its first flight in June of 1968. Galaxy is over 247 feet long, 65 feet tall, has a wingspan of 222 feet, and a maximum takeoff weight of 840,000 pounds. At the same time, the Galaxy's cargo bay alone is one foot longer than the entire length of the first powered aircraft launched by the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Due to its voracious fuel consumption, the pilots nicknamed the C-5 FRED, which stands for Effing Ridiculous Environmental Disaster. Like our previous guest, the C-5 can easily transport 50-ton M1 Abrams main battle tanks or Boeing CH-47 Chinook helicopters to another continent, thus being an integral part of global logistics. Overall, could you even find another candidate to transport 25,844,746 ping-pong balls, 328,301,674 aspirin tablets, 3,222,857 tortillas, or 2,419,558 golf balls? During its military glory since 1969, Galaxy managed to take part in U.S. military operations in Vietnam, Iraq, Yugoslavia, Afghanistan, 
as well as in the Yom Kippur War and operations in the Persian Gulf. In October 1974, the Space and Missile Systems Organization successfully tested an air-launched ballistic missile. A C-5 dropped an 86,000-pound Minuteman Intercontinental Ballistic Missile ICBM, from 20,000 feet above the Pacific Ocean. Some more unusual uses include the transportation of partially disassembled Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk stealth aircraft, whose development was carried out in the utmost secrecy. There's also the fact that the C-5 is the largest aircraft operating in Antarctica. And it doesn't look like the C-5 is heading towards retirement anytime soon. After all, the U.S. Air Force just recently introduced the 5M Super Galaxy, an upgraded version with new engines and avionics that will allow the aircraft to remain in service until at least 2040. Even though Boeing at one time lost to Lockheed in the competition to develop the aircraft that later turned into the C-5 Galaxy, it was not nearly ready to give up. The company focused on civil aviation, creating an aircraft that defined the face of the modern passenger air carrier for decades to come, simultaneously becoming one of the most gigantic and sought-after aircraft in the whole world. We're talking, of course, about the Boeing 747, which sold more than 1,500 aircraft as of 2022 after 54 years of production. But what we're really interested in is its largest modification, the 747-8. The 747-8 is an improved version of the classic Boeing 747, incorporating the latest advances in aerodynamics. It's over 250 feet long, approximately 64 feet tall, and has a wingspan of over 224 feet with a maximum takeoff weight of a whopping 987,000 pounds. In 2007, the U.S. Air Force expressed a desire to modernize its heavily modified Boeing 747-200, called the VC-25 Air Force One, and the E-4B Nightwatch, also known as the Doomsday Plane, acquired back in the late 1980s. The 747-8 was chosen, which in 2015, U.S. Secretary of the Air Force Deborah Lee James described as the only aircraft manufactured in the United States that, when fully missionized, meets the necessary capabilities established to execute the presidential support mission. In December of 2024, Sierra Nevada reported receiving the first two 747-8s out of five sold to Korean Air for further transformation into new E-4Cs, upgraded to effectively counter electronic and nuclear threats as part of the Survivable Airborne Operations Center fleet. The last 747 destined for Atlas Air was released in December 2022, marking the end of the legend's more than 50-year production run. Sure, the impressive weight of an aircraft is cool, but not all of them need to weigh hundreds of tons to forever enter the aviation history books. Take for example the prototype of the nuclear-armed XB-70 Valkyrie supersonic long-range strategic bomber developed in the late 1950s by North American Aviation. This six-engined, delta-winged behemoth could fly thousands of miles at speeds in excess of Mach 3 and an altitude of 70,000 feet. With such parameters, it was literally invulnerable to the interceptors of that time, which were the only effective weapon against bombers. Simply put, the XB would spend such a short time over a particular radar station that it would be able to move out of its coverage area before the station's controllers could drive the fighters into position for interception. The prototype was 185 feet long, 30 feet tall, had a wingspan of 105 feet, and a maximum takeoff weight of 542,000 pounds, slightly less than that of previous aircraft, but it was one of the few planes that could expand in flight. The fact is that when flying at speeds close to Mach 3, the Valkyrie's body, made of stainless steel and titanium, heated up to 330 degrees, which caused the structure to elongate by 0.5 feet. Moreover, the engineers took this thermal expansion into account by using movable joints and special tolerances at the junctions of materials. The XB-70 was canceled twice due to the excessive cost of more than $24 million, which comes out to over $240 million today. Engineers, on the contrary, tried their best to save the Valkyrie, suggesting options for using the bomber as the first stage for a space launch system, a supersonic airliner for 80 passengers, or even a high-speed ambulance. As a result, the program was eventually curtailed due to the emergence of newer anti-aircraft missile systems capable of hitting even targets at high altitudes, as well as the Pentagon's decision that ground-based ICBMs hit targets much faster and cheaper. 
Another sharp-nosed participant in our video is the Soviet supersonic heavy strategic bomber Tubalev Tu-160 Blackjack, originally from the late 1980s. It was about 178 feet long, 43 feet tall, had a wingspan of 182 feet, and a maximum takeoff weight that exceeded even the XB-70 at 606,271 pounds. The Blackjack became the largest supersonic bomber in the world with a variable wing sweep ranging from 20 to 65 degrees. Due to the lack of external weapons suspension, the aircraft could carry up to 99,208 pounds of weapons. Although the Tu-160 is very similar in appearance to the U.S. Air Force's B-1 Lancer, its primary role is as a missile attack platform, but even though the Blackjack is bigger, faster, and has a longer combat range, it's still inferior to the Lancer in terms of combined payload when combined with external payload. From 1989 to 1990, it set a total of 44 world flight speed records in its weight category, and in 2010, a couple of Tu-160s carried out a record 23-hour patrol with a planned flight range of 9,700 nautical miles, flying along the borders of the Russian Federation and over neutral countries, covering waters in the Arctic and Pacific Oceans. Moving on from more elegant bombers, we come back to what even the U.S. military itself affectionately nicknamed Buff, or Big Ugly Fat Effer, aka the B-52 Stratofortress. This is a long-range subsonic strategic bomber developed by Boeing, one which has been unleashing the wrath of democracy on its opponents ever since 1955. Along with John Moses Browning's game-changing M2 machine gun, which has been dispatching enemy aircraft since the 1930s, the Stratofortress is also an excellent example of military hardware proven and seasoned by decades of successful battlefield use. During the controversial Operation Linebacker II, more than 200 B-52s flew 730 missions, dropping over 44 million pounds of bombs 20, tons, on North Vietnam. And during Operation Desert Storm, these buffs delivered 40% of all weapons dropped by coalition forces. It's 159 feet long, about 41 feet tall, has a wingspan of 185 feet, and a maximum takeoff weight of 488,000 pounds. All this allows it to deliver 70,000 pounds of ammunition over an astonishing 8,800 miles without refueling. Initially, it had turboprop engines like the Tu-95, but Boeing dared to take a risky step by installing eight twin turbojet engines, and they were bet correctly. Many tried to dissuade them, arguing that this would negatively affect the operating range of the device, but in fact it surpassed the same Tu-160 in terms of flight range without refueling, more than 8,800 miles versus 7,600 miles. But there were exceptions to the rule. For example, in January of 1962, an unarmed B-52H set a world range record, flying 12,532 miles from Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, Japan, to Torrijan Air Base in Spain without refueling. Today, there's not only zero intention to ride off the Stratofortress, but actually equip it in the foreseeable future with air-launched cruise missiles with a nuclear warhead, AGM-181 Long Range Standoff Weapon, LRSO, as well as hypersonic missiles. Our list today is further completed by yet another legend of American aviation, the B-1 Lancer, better known as Bone, which entered service in 1986 and to this day is one of the three main U.S. strategic bombers, along with the B-52 Stratofortress and B-2 Spirit. Interestingly enough, the Lancer almost fell into prototype status when the 39th U.S. President, Jimmy Carter, announced the cancellation of the B-1A program in 1977, calling it one of the most difficult decisions since he took office. However, Carter's successor, Ronald Wilson Reagan, had other plans, reviving the B-1 from the ashes it had nearly faded into. This bomber's 146 feet long, 34 feet tall, has a wingspan of 137 feet and a maximum takeoff weight of 477,000 pounds. Its maximum payload of 125,000 pounds deservedly gives it the title of heavyweight record holder in the matter of weapons delivery among all other bombers in the world, although many are surprised when they hear about this, seeing the B-1 and B-52 side by side in real life. After all, visually speaking, Buff seems many times larger than its colleague. Introduced as a nuclear arms deliverer with the dissolution of Strategic Air Command in 1992 after the end of the Cold War, the B-1B's nuclear fangs were disabled and it was equipped for conventional bombing. 
It made its debut in 1998 during Operation Desert Fox, and the following year participated in NATO's fight in Kosovo against the Yugoslav People's Army. This was followed by participation in Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan, where B-1s dropped 40% of the airborne munitions, including 3,900 Joint Direct Attack Munitions JDAM, thus increasing the combat readiness level to 79%. It was also present during the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Despite the imminent replacement of the Lancer fleet with the latest B-21 Raider stealth bombers from Northrop Grumman, the U.S. Air Force still intends to operate the legendary aircraft until at least 2038. The military continues to modernize them and even intends to integrate the hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept or Hawk, a hypersonic ramjet-powered air-launched cruise missile being developed by DARPA. And now it's your turn. Tell us which of the guests in today's video you like the most. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.